Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 8.6, Solving Rational Equations and Inequalities, Part 2. Now, we are still going to be solving rational equations here, but we are going to be solving everybody's favorite word problems. So nonetheless, let's go ahead and jump right into number one, where we have Aaron adds 80% brine, which is just salt and water solution, to 16 ounces of solution that is 10% brine. How much of the solution should be added to create a solution that is 50% brine? Huh? What? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is make a table with the amount of brine total solution, original added and new, and then I'm going to see what I can find from that word problem. I'm going to start off with the total solution or the original total solution. Aaron adds 80% brine. Okay, that doesn't tell me how much original solution I add to. Here we go now. To what kind of solution? We have eight, 16 ounces. 16 ounces of total solution at first. That's what we started with, 16 ounces. And then 10% of that solution is brine. So how much of that is brine? Well, that's going to be point. One zero because we were given a percent times that 16. Now let's go how much is added. Do we know how much is added? No, we do not know how much is added because we're looking to create a solution that is 50% brine. So I'm going to say that we do not know how much is added, but we do know that the solution added, added to it was 0.80. Now, we're just going to take this times what was added, and so we're going to take that times x. Now, my new solution is going to consist of this plus this, correct? So it's going to be 0 0.10 times 16, and then plus 0.8 times x. And then my new my new total solution, I have just 16 plus x. Now we set up everything. Now we just have to figure out how can we put this in an equation. Well, we were dealing with percents, right? And it says how much of the solution should be added to create a 50% brine. Well, we know that percent is out of what? percent is out of 100. So what if we used 50% brine and then the amount which is here and the total solution. So here we go. Let's use this 50%. So it's going to be 50 over 100 and that's going to equal your amount. Well our amount is right here which is 0 0.10 times 16, that's going to be plus 0.8x, that's going to go over the total amount of solution we had, so it's 16 plus x. Now we have two fractions, yes, so now we can just cross multiply, so I'm going to take this guy times that, so it's going to be 50 times 16 plus x, I'm going to close that up, and then it's going to equal 100 times, and now everything on top, which is 0 0.10 times 16 plus 0.8x, closing it up. Now I'm going to distribute the 50, so it's going to be 800 plus 15 x. Before I distribute that 100, I'm going to clean what is in the parentheses. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. So it's going to be 1.6 because it's 0.1 times uh, 16 plus 0.8x. Now I'm going to distribute that 100 through those parentheses. So it is 160 plus 80x. That's going to equal 800 plus 15 x. Now we solve for x, so I'm going to subtract the 160 over here to get 640. That equals 30x. What do I do to solve for x? I divide by 30 to get 21.3 repeating, or 21 and a third for x. And what is 
21 of a third. That is solution, and that solution is measured in ounces. So we are adding 21 and a third ounces to our solution so we can have a 50% brine solution. Next, we have Sandra is rowing a canoe on Stanhope Lake. Her rate in still water is six miles per hour. It takes Sandra three hours to travel, 10 miles round trip. Assuming that Sandra rode at a constant rate of speed, determine the rate of the current. Whenever we are talking about rate, distance, or time, we're probably gonna use distance equals rate times time, and time equals distance divided by rate. Time equals distance divided by rate. We set up a table, and then we look for some keywords. So let's start with time with current. Well, what is the time with current? Time gives us distance over rate. So how far did we travel with the current? Well, we went 10 miles round trip. So we went five miles, five miles one way. So we have distance is five, and that's going to go over how fast she, does she go in still water. That's going to be six miles per hour plus the rate of the current. The rate of the current, we do not know, so I'm just going to say plus R. Now, the time against the current. Well, she still went five miles, regardless if she's going upstream or, upstream or downstream, she went five miles. Now, it's going to be six minus, because that current, when she goes against the current, it's going to take away from how fast she's going, right? So we're going to take away the rate of the current. So minus R. And then finally, total time, how long did it say? It said it took her three hours. So now how can we solve this? Well, if we add the time with the current and the time against the current, that should give us our total time, correct? So let's go ahead and do that. We have five over six plus R and then plus five over six minus R. That's going to give us our total time. So what do we do here? First things first, we find a common denominator. Our common denominator is going to be this times that times, and now this is over 1, so it's just going to be this times that. So it's 6 plus r times 6 minus r. Here, this guy, what does this guy need? Top and bottom needs 6 plus r and 6 minus r. Here just needs 6 plus r. Here needs 6 minus r. Now what do we do? Since we have the same common denominators, we can just chop off the common denominators and look at the top. We have 5 times 6 minus r and plus 5 and 6 plus r. And here though we have equals 3 times 6 plus r and 6 minus r. Let's go ahead and distribute everything. Here with this 5, I have 30 minus 5r plus 30 plus 5r equals, I'm going to multiply everything in the parentheses first, so it's 3 times, it's 36 minus r squared. Can I get away with that? Because I have 6 times a negative r and then 6 times a positive r, so that's going to just cancel out in the middle. So I'm going to now distribute what's over here and I'm going to clean up on this side. I have 30 plus 30, which is 60, equals 108 minus 3x squared. Now I'm going to move everything over to the other side, so it's now 3x squared minus 48, that still equals 0. Now we can solve for x squared. I'm going to factor out that 3, so it's 3x squared minus 16, that's going to be equal to zero. Factor what's inside the parentheses. So it's three, and then x minus four, x minus four, and x plus four. That equals zero. We do not care about the three because there's no variable attached to it. So it's x minus four 
equals zero, and x plus four equals zero. Solving for x, x equals a positive four, and x equals a negative four. We have two answers, but can we have a negative rate? No, we cannot, so we cancel that off, so we're left with x equals four, and so the rate of the current was four miles per hour. For our last question, we're going to be dealing with rates again, and it reads, Every year, the junior and senior classes at Hillcrest High School build a house for the community. If it takes the senior class 24 days to complete a house, and 18 days if they work with the junior class, how long would it take the junior class to complete the house if they worked alone? Now, what do we have? It says 24 days to complete a house. If I wrote this as one house per 24 days, what does that sound like? That sounds like a rate, correct? Well, how, could, how do you represent rates? Just as fractions. So we have the senior rate is 1 over 24. Do I know what the junior rate is? Well, we're looking for the junior rate because it's asked how long would it take the junior class. So I'm going to leave that as 1 over r, and then their combined rate is 18 days if they work with the junior class. So it's going to be 1 over 18. How do we get the combined rate? We add them together. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 1 over 24 plus 1 over r. That's going to equal 1 over 18. Our common denominator is going to be what? You can multiply those together or you can find out that the least common multiple is 72. We also need an r there. So what are we going to multiply to everything? How do I get this 24 to be 72? I have to take it times 3r. What you do to the bottom, you have to do the top. You have to take the r times 72. There's nothing or no way you can get around that. 18 is times 4. You also have to take it times R, so it's 4 and R. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So now that we have the same common denominators, we can just drop them. On top, we are left with 3R plus 72, and that equals 4R. You'll like how we solve this one. Subtract the 3R over. So we are left with just 1R. 1R equals 72, so we have R equals 72, and how many days would it come? Uh, would it take for the junior class to complete building the house by themselves? That would be 72 days. So when we're looking at just rates, we're using something like this when we're using just rates. And that does it for section 8.6, Solving Rational Equations and Inequalities, Part 2. Good day.